All right, we're talking knives again, and this time we're talking the Spyderco Yojimbo 2. Okay, before we get started, I wanna talk about the standard G10 scale. So it's got a nice grippy G10, a really grippy G10 that comes stock. In this case though, I'm rocking some titanium brass. Okay, so the Spyderco Yojimbo 2, designed by Michael Janich, founder of Marshall Blade Concepts, to function very specifically the way that, that he operates and the way that he uses a knife. He's designed a handful of different ones, including like the Janisong, which I really wanna get my hands on, but they're not sold in the US anymore. But so this one in particular, he prototyped, actually worked up the prototype himself. I'll link a video to where he talks about the original design of this and kind of the process it went through, the evolution, which is very cool. Originally, he prototyped it up himself, made it by hand, and then got that over to Mike Snowdy. Mike Snowdy made a prototype to kind of see how it feels. So we could get it over to Spyderco and see what they thought. So finally, after a lot of doing, it's now produced by Spyderco out of Golden, Colorado. You can pick one up pretty easily. This particular knife, let's talk about it. So I've been kind of intrigued by this knife for, for a while, but watching that video made me realize that a lot of the design philosophy that went into it actually mirrors the same philosophy that I put into into the knife that I designed to carry and love. So some of you may know that I have a knife that I carry, a knife that I designed to kind of match the philosophies of knife work that I have. And at some point, maybe I'll do a video. I know I've talked a little bit about it on Instagram. You can go find some videos on that. So this was a knife that I designed to match the way that I use a knife, the way that I hold it, the way I carry it, the way I train it. Now, watching the video on this knife, I realized that a lot of the same design philosophy went into this one. That's really cool because while they're very different knives, they have very similar philosophies in their operation. Realizing that the same ideas were put into this knife was really cool. Now, this knife is really made in two versions. One in the folder version, the Yojimbo 2, and also a fixed blade in the Ronin 2. Same profile, same handle profile, same blade profile, just fixed blade versus folder. Like I mentioned before, this knife comes in G10 scales with an S30V blade, which is a great steel. It's in a Warncliffe blade profile, and it's got kind of a very interesting contoured, comfortable handle. The standard pocket clip, if you've worked with Spyderco knives and you're familiar with the flush mount pocket clip, we'll get into this auxiliary pocket clip here in a minute. So you'll see the design. The design in, in the way Michael approaches handling the knife is starting with a three finger grip because that's where that power of the grip is locking in the thumb and the finger secondary into this grip here. What he refers to as a Filipino grip where you've got the thumb behind the blade reinforcing the power into the cut. Now this particular one, you'll see has this really cool deep carry pocket clip. This is designed by 5x5 Combat Solutions. Um, I'll link them down below. They make this pocket clip for a number of different Spyderco knives, but it also has this pickpocket feature. So this one, you'll find it referred to as the Recluse, and then you've got this pickpocket. This is designed to emulate the Emerson Wave feature that you find in a lot of Emerson knives, but also find in some of the Spyderco knives and a handful of other knives as well. This particular thing just attaches into the spider hole and then you've got that feature into an, a non-waved knife. There's a number of different ones out there that they've done this add-on for. Most, if not all of them, Spyderco, from what I remember. I know that they've done a lot of Spyderco. I can't remember if there's any others in there, but the Spidey Hole is a big reason why, because of the way that it attaches. It's very easy. Plus, they're really popular knives, really easy to come by, and that's kind of kind of the gig. 5x5 Combat Solutions specifically makes quite a few different add-on accessories for knives. They call it their after knife, and I really dig that. After you get your knife, pick up one of their accessories to add things like this deep carry pocket clip, like this pickpocket. They do have ones that have more of like a seatbelt cutter, a flathead screwdriver. Also, one of my personal favorites, I really wanna try one out for like a Delica, just a really great little knife, is their little Marlin spike. So you're working with paracord knots, things like that. So you've got this Marlin spike on the back of a really great knife. Most of the knives that I've seen that have that Marlin spike are actually kind of junk, unless you wanna spend an enormous amount of money. And something like the Delica is an excellent knife to add that Marlin spike feature to the back where you've just got that tucked away and you can open that up. I think that's really cool and can't wait to try that out at some point. I've got a number of different features features out there, definitely go look at their stuff to see what I mean. Link below to 5x5 Combat Solutions website where you can get the knife with these pre-installed. Uh, the brass scales in this case are made by Flytanium who makes brass, copper, carbon fiber, titanium, and G10 scales for a lot of different knives, not just Spyderco, a number of different brands. Very cool. I really like the weight that gets added when you wear brass handles on your knife as well as the patina that it'll start to develop over time. Admittedly, it makes for a slicker surface. so 
combatively, you lose something with that, right? It's got a very contoured grip, really reinforced in the way that you hold it in the hand, but that's something to keep in mind. When it gets slick and wet with mud and blood and everything else, then it's gonna be a lot harder to hold on to. As my day-to-day -day profession does not put me in the realm of, of having to cut people, then it's a little bit easier for me to get away with running brass scales that don't have any texture to them. Maybe at some point, Flytanium will start doing some texture into this. They've done some texture into their titanium scales, and I think that would be really cool for the brass. But as of this point, that doesn't exist yet. All in all, this is an incredibly low profile knife in the pocket, but a very full featured and full gripped, something that's really excellent for a lot of cutting tasks, a lot of things that you're gonna do with it, because the truth is, when you're carrying this knife, you're gonna carry it first and foremost to use the tool day to day. That way you've got the built up mechanics and skills to draw this knife and deploy it when you need to. Additionally, you should always train to be able to do those skills in more hostile situations because being able to deploy your knife under duress and get out of it while managing another person is very difficult. Additionally, this knife comes in a trainer version, same material, save for the blade metal. Uh, I think it's an aluminum. Usually they're aluminum, but I haven't checked. It handles the same G10 material in a red. The blade is a, has got a replacement blade that's that's dull, but not just this one dull. Like you, like you've seen, this is very thin, so you wouldn't want to just dull this. It's still cut, so you want something with more of a broader edge to it, so that you can work a little more impact safely. So that's the configuration. I don't have one of those yet. I'd like to pick one up so that I can get this on the mat and train with it as well. The knife is designed such that when it's closed, you can wrap your hand around it and this becomes an impact tool that you can use both for up close controlling features as well as striking features and still have your hand on it ready to deploy when you need to and have that ready to go. A lot of different ways to deploy the knife, the inertia flip that he does, I'm not good at that, but you do have stuff like the spidey drop that drops open into your hand as well as your standard spidey flick. The wave feature itself is gonna catch clothing and flip the knife open on draw so as you're drawing the knife out, the blade's deployed and ready to go. Very cool feature, changes the draw, right? If you're used to drawing forward, then you're not gonna do that because on this, when you use that wave, you're actually gonna do that drawing backwards out of the pocket, which is okay if you're working a person, pull the knife, ready to go. That's that's very well designed for that. Even though if you look up the story of the wave, it was a total accident. It wasn't the original intention of that feature. Does fit comfortably in a reverse grip. I will say that this, Neural tip of the of the recluse actually creates a great thumb ramp with some jimping for you to get your thumb into in a reverse grip position. Working your standard positions, you've got edge forward, edge back, reverse with edge forward and reverse with edge back. I don't personally use and train all of those, but they're all available if that's your style. They're pretty comfortable either way. Anytime you've got a, a fairly contoured handle, working these reverse ones becomes possibly less comfortable, though I'll say that it's pretty comfortable with this knife. I tend to be an edge forward in both situations. So very, very comfortable, very easy to work and deploy as well. Pulling in a reverse grip, still pretty simple, same kind of spidey flick, and then you're ready to go in that position. Does have a bit of a swell on the back here, which is really great because of the way that it fits into the palm of the hand. Really like that. This pickpocket, accessory provides some extra leverage it's pretty comfortable I, I prefer the actual if you look at the outline of the knife it was kind of designed to be able to drop your thumb into there and I prefer that though it's a trade-off do you want that feature where the knife can just be drawn and, and deployed in the same motion or do you want to have that little bit more comfortable thumb ramp it's your call and if you try the pickpocket you might find that you prefer that thumb ramp it's all good either way definitely a lot of versatility in this knife you can use it a number of different ways. It's got that straight utility style edge where you've got that same scraping, cutting, piercing, all of these things. This spine is actually gonna reinforce that onto the cut in a piercing motion. But then if you look at me, it's shaped like a box cutter. So when you're cutting open, it's, it's designed that way. It's designed to be an excellent cutting tool. But you also have those functions of scraping or, or that kind of thing as well. With the thickness of here, not only is that reinforcing that edge, it also it's splitting things like an ax. If you push cut through things, I mean, it's literally pushing it apart because of how much that thickness changes during that secondary bevel. Been carrying this for a few weeks now every day as my everyday knife, just putting it through its paces. That's how I like to test out a knife because that's how you find out how it works and, and where it fits into your day to day. Because when you don't have a different knife to, to reach for, then you end up figuring out, does this do what I want it to do? 
and 100% definitely does. I find this to be one of my favorite knives that I've picked up. I've picked a number of different different knives up. I've used a number of different blade styles, that sort of thing. And feature-wise altogether, and the geometry of this, I really just like this knife a lot. One thing I didn't talk about is the actual locking, locking mechanism. So this one you'll see is a compression lock. It's got a very smooth action. So if you look inside here, you'll see a, a detent. That detent is kind of U-shaped. And so rather than a liner lock, because it is a liner-based system, rather than a liner lock that pushes up and butts up against the blade so that any force is pushed into the front edge of that liner to keep the knife open, this actually is kind of this U-shape. The liner continues up until it clicks into place so that it actually has uh, three-dimensional control, right? The actual force is pushing on the sides of the steel rather than pushing into the front of the steel. That front of the steel, there's a different mechanic there, a different type of leverage, and that's been able to fail. The compression lock, once it locks in place, if it, dis if it disengages, if it fails, it's more likely to actually just jam the knife open, and there you go, you're good. So worst case, you have a fixed blade knife until you can fix it, not a bad deal. But the way that that works is that release, you just drop that out and there is nothing that feels quite as good as how smooth these compression lock knives open and close. Really, really like compression lock. There's a handful of different ones that, that Spyderco makes that, and every one that I've owned, I've really enjoyed that feature, and now I come to look for it specifically. In summary, do I think this knife is for everybody? No. Not everybody needs a knife that has such a fine tip to it, but if you're looking for a defensive knife, definitely 100% recommend this over quite a few others that I've worked with, especially including the fact that it has a trainer available to it that's the same material, same mechanic. I think it's a really big deal that when you train your tools that it's the same tool, just a safer version. And if you're somebody who likes a flat, straight edge, a Warncliffe style utility type blade, I mean, man, you tie these things together and this is just an all around great knife. I'm gonna be carrying this one a lot, I'm a huge, huge fan. Definitely check out Flytanium for their accessories, 5x5 Combat Solutions for their accessories, and Spyderco. You really can't go wrong with a Spyderco knife, so check them out too. I encourage you to look up Michael Janich and look into the martial blade concepts and the system of fighting that he teaches that has a very Filipino salat kind of background to it, something that definitely sits close to home for me and but it's just very very practical very functional and he's got more of that kind of dirty style i'm just going to use the parts that work and i'm, I'm going to cut out a lot of the art and get right down to business i think that's really important if you plan on defending yourself with a tool and just in general it's just a good blade based system so anyway links below for all that stuff i'm ken this is kenfu tv this is another kenfu review of the spider co yojimbo 2 and I'll catch you in the next one. In the meantime, what should I review next? Let me know in the comments. All right, later. <laughs> and this is a knife. This is a knife. Uh, man, I lose my vocabulary like crazy when I'm filming.